Shane, what's the crack? <sighs> what's happening? How do you like the coffee? Any milk, no. Hey, I've got... Fuck off. Did you want milk? No, I need Do you take milk? I do, yeah, actually, but I'm all right. See, I didn't think you'd take milk. Look at you. Like, look at you. The specimen. I was uh, started doing a bit of walking, you know. Me and Mick thinking we were great lads and we're out doing about 5k a night after dinner, after we get the kids to bed. And I was really feeling great. Next thing I was looking at your story and you're fucking bit like Captain America. And you're that prick. Fuck's sake. No, I don't. How have you got so big and playing fucking football and oh, gym? And, big. and ah, you're, you're bigger. Well, I'm heavier, but. Are you heavier now than you are? Um, well, it's something that I can't make out is, yeah, I'm the same weight now I was when I used to try and bulk and that doesn't make sense unless, I think it's just less trying sometimes, it just comes a little bit easier compared to years ago, stressing under trying to get bigger and trying to get leaner, it's too much pressure. You don't worry about that now? No, I, could, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even know what I'm going to eat next, no. I, I didn't think that you'd be able to get up the stairs tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you you rang me. You're hardly exaggerating. No, but you rang me during the week. You were after doing your hamstring. Yeah. And it was bad now. You were barely able to drive it home. Drive home. Mm. And you're jogging upstairs. Well, I only noticed I was able to take two steps. How did you manage that? Um, well, it's funny. Uh, every time I get an injury, I seem to learn something new. But um, normally people will come saying, oh, I tend to do a hamstring. So we never touch it. But this time now, I was forced to actually look at that area. So between figuring out bits and pieces myself and I rang the crowd in America as well and said, right, I 100% am after tearing this. What settings can I do? Because there's hundreds of protocols on it. You used the machine, that fancy machine you have. Yeah, so it can actually read. So now, it, well, since I last talked to you, yeah, look, to be honest, we completely changed the treatments in the sense of we have my original one that was quite invasive mm. with the pads and stuff, but then we have a lot more... Um, a lot nicer ones now because you don't have to go through that. We still allowed in sections of that, but treating a lot more of the spine as in just reading the scar tissue. But so that's what I did. I just, you simply get the, I could give you the machine and you could say, I'm sore somewhere here. And I'll say, well, just keep pressing around where you think the soreness is, but the machine will read scar tissue. So sometimes where you're saying you were sore, it mightn't have been there at all. Like for example, you might be saying you're sore in the front of the hand, but it might be on the palm that the problem mm. was and the machine will tell you the difference. But with that, I just literally went to the tear itself where I was sore and it was like reading four or five times higher than anywhere else on the leg. And then you have three specific uh, protocols that you have to go like five minutes of this, five minutes of this, and then 30 minutes of that. With the machine? Yeah. So it was deadly because... And what does that do, the machine? Um, keeping it simple, like each of the frequencies will tell the tissue different things. So there's certain settings that will pop up and certain numbers and, and letters in particular will pop up so the body is trying to recognize this frequency that's coming in. So it's like a foreign frequency, really. And then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, the body is able to read it. And um, when certain letters pop up, it'll say, we'll read it from here on, move on to the next point. That'd be the easiest way to describe it. Um, and we do that with the spine. Um, it's that powerful, actually. One of the guys that's working with me, and he, I'm going to get him to do a video. Um, might even get him down here sometime if you want. But he was paralyzed from the nipple down. He fell out in Australia. But um, he was about the third or fourth guy that we tried this new treatment on where you read the spine. So he obviously had a spinal injury. But when he came to me, he obviously uh, had got himself to a certain point, but it was still very obvious that he needed crutches and he'd sway a lot and his walking gait was all over the place. So now he doesn't use the crutches really at all. Um, massive change. but um, Just from the treatment? From the bit of rehab, but then when we did this treatment. So he'd been getting the previous treatment. So obviously mm. since I went to Miami and came back, everything changed really. But uh, I want it. He can tell you exactly what happened, but mad shit that he couldn't do before or told he might never be able to do again since the, the, the spine operation, it started to happen. In regards to going toilet, all these different mad shit. So now again, we're back to nearly just finding out all these stuff by clients. We'd be saying to them 24 hours later, well, what do you notice? Some of them are saying, I couldn't keep my eyes open. I was so tired after my body just went into shutdown. Whereas the following day, they said they've never felt as clear and emptied out and a lot of people are actually going to toilet a lot after it it's like it's just rebooting everything so but you're from looking at your stories and talking to you like your whole business model has nearly ramped up it's so busy now up there with that treatment yeah and the problem before was you'd have you were under pressure because you were taking two an hour and somebody would say you know I'm in a lot of bother or can I come up and you'd be going 
we're booked out for the next whatever couple of weeks and I was like right it's not ready yet to, to take up onto another whether it's a bed per hour or not so hmm. I'll be honest the last three months I've, it's been the first time ever that I've really been like I can't switch off like my mind if you were sat if you sat around me like my mind was racing because I'm like how do I get to the next stage and I was so curious to know all this stuff that I had to find out about the machines because with the mach what do you call the next stage to be able to give more service for a month so be prior to this like somebody might have worked with us and we'd only be able to facilitate one or two sessions a month and that's it simply wouldn't have had the manpower to do it you wouldn't have had the machines to do it so that's why I, I've bit, I bit the bullet big time and I look how many machines do you have now uh, 37 37 yeah can I buy one of them you can. Uh, it's not. We're not ready for that model yet. Again, we're sorting all that out with them in America. Um, I don't know whether. Well, two things straight up. Like you're after getting a monopoly on a business end now because you you have the machine. Um, we have discovered certain treatments that the, the guys in America didn't even know. Like he flew over last weekend. He stayed at me for four days in order to try and learn off me. Then, so I brought him through what this we're is the doing. The guy that sells the machines. Yeah. So again, that was our curiosity. I started, he was using this prong thing. We were using pads. He was using combs. We were using something else. I was always experimenting on my own body. So I found all these random spots. Like you said, why are you putting the pad there? Yeah. And so on. But um, yeah, look, the next level was to be able to take more people. Um, not only that, but to potentially look at a rentable business as well. That like we're going to go huge into scars now. Like, you know, they open my eyes completely to saying you have to treat the scar before what, what you... Do you... When you say scars? Oh, like proper old up, like like <clears throat> women's C-sections, you know, complaining of back pain. So scars underneath? Yeah, that never healed. And I've, I've a good few images there on the phone. We'll share them over the next few weeks. But really, I suppose at the minute, we're just banking all this content again, and then we'll we'll roll it out. But um, I'm we're kind of upskilling within the business now. So we're all hands on deck and everybody, like last weekend... All the staff went through the course, if you like, um, for certain treatments. So now when people are coming in, especially if we know that you're working with us for a couple of weeks, we'll say, right, next Tuesday you're getting this exact session done, but the, we can take four or five in an hour. And now I freed myself up some, essentially the sharpest thing about me used to be my eye. So rather than me standing over you for an hour, I'll be able to run constantly now from bed to bed because I assess you, I make the plan, you're on the bed, and by the time they've even cleared a specific point on you, I'm back and we're on to the next point. And it's, I have to say, it's just, it's, it seems busier, but uh, for me, it's, it's probably never been easier because I'm consistently able to follow a system now. You know? Hit, me, hit me with the numbers, roughly, come on. Humor <laughs> me, how much are they? Oh, roughly, right. I'm not asking your... Um, well, one of them is, well, yeah, 4,800. 4, 6,600 to get it into Ireland. And you have how many? Well, I have 37, but we, there is... Not a, too many people following your business model. <laughs> well, there's a cheaper, there's a cheaper one as well, which we, they only have four settings on it. So it's about 2,200. So we ended up getting, um, now in fairness to the company in America, they allowed me to split that over the last two or three months. But, um... Yeah, we got 16 of them. And really, the difference in them is they don't have the monitor to give you information, but I didn't care about that because I always use my hand anyways. So if you bought the machine and you, you could start treating there and stick it on his neck and the next thing you'd be watching for the number, which takes the person out of it. The intuitive piece is gone now. Do you get me? Yeah. Whereas if I, hand, if I intuitively put my hand on your neck and go, oh, there's something not right here, I'll double check it with the machine and the machine will say 110. I was like, told you. And then I'm gone on to the next bed. And by the time, it could take four or five minutes to clear that point. And then when I come back, we're moving on to the next point. And that's how we're able to rip through the body now. But because we bought so many, like hand and heart, you're probably getting the value of 20 to 30 sessions in that hour now. It's fucking crazy. It's like so much is getting done. And you, you experiment on yourself all the time. So you hurt your tear. And how much... Like How much have seven, you speeded up? For seven days, if you Google it anyways, like can you say grade two tear, for example, I have a feeling it was a grade two, grade three would be looking at potentially off a bone. And Now, I don't bruise Blech. myself, so I can't I can't value it on that, but I know... You don't bruise? 
No, I never, I never, like even when I done the, like when I did a big injury a few years ago, I swear I never seemed to bruise. Like, you know, some people do a hamstring and it's black and blue for days. That's another little tick that makes me think that you're like Spider-Man or some sort of superhero. <laughs> Fucking too cold. <laughs> um, no, but hand and heart, I reckon uh, I should be on, it'd, it'd be at least seven days before you can take a full stride walking if you do your hamstring, at least like. And going up the stairs will be, like I said, you'd be smaller steps, you know, certainly wouldn't be doing, but... Yeah, so it just t- tweaked it going, do you know what? The next time somebody contacts and says I'm after tearing, I'm just going to say to them, why don't you just come up to the gym for about four hours straight and do that? You know, just go at whatever. If we want, if you have to come in the evening, come in the evening. But now from that one injury, have a comp- it's like a whole new avenue of business. Like it's like, right, deadly. It doesn't matter what muscle you tear. Come up, I'll give you the exact protocol. You can sit in that room. As long as you keep drinking water, you can treat yourself for hours because it is quite dehydrating. You have to drink a lot when you're treating yourself. Is that nearly what you're most busy at now? Yeah, it's um, six, seventh of our business is the way I say it. So my gym used to be the, the gym piece, um, something for anyone that, over the years, like I would be probably um, too intense or too too passionate in the classes piece. But I've only realized in the last 12 months that, what makes me tick is progress, you know, and it would be unfair of me what, then to what have... What makes you tick? Get, making progress no, or the lack of? No, no, not tick. Um, I mean, the tick as in what really makes me happy. What makes me tick, sorry. Yeah. Bad word. But um, what... what um, yeah, because I, I'd love nothing more than bringing them to that, you know, really tough place in the class. Next thing, they're on a high after. And, they, you know, you did see or they'll text you and be saying, fuck that was an unreal class and that's what it was about for me. Whereas then when I started to notice over the years, it was like, Jesus, it seems to be the same thing though each time. Like it's like I asked you last week to lift this way and then you lifted that and then the following week you went straight back to the original way. And again, I know it's a little comfort zone, but it got really difficult as the years went on and I got a lot more in tune and I felt like, Jesus, am I wasting my energy here? Like why why do I kind of have to have this? So I went through a patch with that as regards to the gym and really struggled with that. And then notice for some reason why when I do a certain class with certain people in it, I would be wrecked after it. And then others, it, they would be phenomenal to train. So that I found that tricky for a while. And then obviously, naturally, I'm trying to progress because I was going, look, I've done 10 years of the gym and I was slowly trying to bring in other instructors and teach them stuff. And I guess when you're running, like anybody running your own business, no matter what it is, when you're doing things, people say, you know, it might be one trainer might have a a certain thing they love, other trainers mightn't. And um but just it's just the way it's happened to be honest. And I didn't follow it from a a money value. I followed it from the passion going, this is a fucking minefield. Like I'm beginning to uncover all of this stuff. And obviously the people that don't know me like in you know in a one liner. It all started really when daddy died. That's what I'm saying. That's where the passion came from, this obsession and then my own injuries on top of that. So that was always the obsession. Like I want to know more, want to know more if someone says you're going to be out for six weeks, I used to say, fuck that. I'm going to be back in 10 days, two weeks. So there was always that drive there anyways as, as a player to want to know more. And thankfully now we're just getting to a place in the business where people have bought into the method and the results are there and financially we're in a position then to be able to keep investing. But, but you're, you're an astute man. Like not just, like you're a good businessman. Like lo- you, you have social media same as me and loads of people ask you, you know, how do you do this in business? And I'm under pressure here. Oh, I don't know. I'm only learning. But you know shit. Like I've often come to you for advice. Like, But you, I, I, I think sometimes people think it's overcomplicated. It's like, how can you be more knowledgeable in any way? It doesn't matter. Like nowadays we've no excuse. So like I would say the first thing anyone to do to personally grow um, would be just start listening to audiobooks. Like I, I keep saying that. I tell all the clients when they're coming, I'm like, if you have a three hour journey to come to get treatment, you seriously should be wiping out a book coming up and going back. Do you get me? Is that how you learned stuff about business or was it from making <laughs> um, mistakes? No, I was very, like anytime I ever trained even business guys, I'd be, I'd be just like that curious child that keeps asking questions and why and why. Um, so I don't know where that drive came from. I don't know, but it's an insatiable drive that's just become so strong in the last two or three years in particular. What have you and, learned most in the last two or three years about business? Ah, uh, like, sure. <laughs> In the last two or three years, from a business perspective, I've done more than I did in the 10 years. Like, like I mean, for six and seven Christmases in a row, come January, I was genuinely going, I really need these classes to come back. Like, I could never get ahead. You were 
you know, you fucking your rent was was a quarter of your like I always remember a figure going looking at the um doing when I was doing the gym and people think you were milking it. Like I biggest mistake I ever made as well when I had the BMW was like at the time you didn't you weren't awake to it, but you had a BMW that was a five year loan and the loan was 109 a week and you're probably getting 450 of a wage and at the end of your business accounts like in every month you might have had some months you didn't have any profit and other months you had a thousand but yeah I seem to be working 60 and 80 hours going what the fuck is this all about and I just got really smart very quickly then and went like definitely narrowed in the focus a lot more um, well, to focus on what? Um, I know every business is different, but the basics are the same. So why are you cutting out? Why are you deciding? What? Right, for, energy became the big thing. So I started to really get in tune with some people were really killing my energy. Like I, I couldn't have, I, I just weaned myself out like t to nearly be a bit of a loner in the last two or three years um, because I started to recognize I, I can't seem to do small talk, you know, or I can't seem to sit in an environment where there's someone you know, you may not are sitting across from me and I'm going, you don't really want to be in my company and I don't really want to be in yours, so let's just do each other a favour. Whereas, you know, these were these were things that I probably took a little bit too serious, but when I, it was hard not to when I seen the reward, like the peace that I always, all of a sudden had. And then I just, the, the focus got that more. that you had more. when what? When you, the you peace you'd have when you stopped being around that. And then all of a sudden that energy was able to tra channel into personal growth, whether it was business growth, whether it was just simply the the creative side of your mind it used to come when, when it was at peace, like when you were really quiet or you were just daydreaming. That's when all the creativity would come. So what um, people you were working with were sucking the joy out of your life? Um, yeah, like I suppose it was a mix. It's a mix of both. Like, you know, I mean, it's very hard to get. That's probably another topic in itself. But just to finish on the piece where you're saying where people want to grow, like, we genuinely have no excuse anymore to not fill our minds with the right stuff. Like, so switching off the news instantly, just don't tune into it anymore. Don't listen to the radio anymore. Like, um, maybe reduce the amount of hours that you're just watching box sets. Now, don't get me wrong, we watch that. Uh, um, Yellowstone. Yeah. It's very good, isn't it? Brilliant. Like, and it was How great. many people did you want to take to the train station? <laughs> But it was like, this was saying, it was like, you go in, in splurts, like, you know, it was like, you're not, you don't always have to be on, but it was like fucking great to do nothing as well there. Like you just literally got hooked and you come home and you wouldn't progress in any other avenue of your life. But I didn't give a fuck because it was really nice too and you have to have a balance and it's a bit of time for you to sit with your partner or whatever. And, but then you kind of flick that switch again and you go, okay, okay, we've had our fun now. We need to push another little bit, not push another little bit. Um, and again, some people might find that intense, but the reality is you're all you're doing is flipping numbers on their head. So instead of listening to the radio or your Dermot and Dave every fucking morning, you're going, I'm actually going to try and listen to a podcast. Um, I have a friend I keep telling them is like, you know, if you're interested in potentially going down a route of leadership or wanting to upskill on a job, just listen to every leadership, just type leadership into audiobook and listen to every single podcast over the next 12 months. And the day you walk into a um, maybe an interview you will physically be able to speak more about that area of your life to that person who's interviewing you. Or you'll manifest something into your life and all of a sudden a job opportunity will land and you'll be there ready to rock. Do you know that kid away? Mm. Um, so small things like that. But definitely on a business side, tax-wise, got very, very smart. Um, you know, some people take big wages out. For um, any people working in revenue, please turn off for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> no, that's the thing, you're doing it all right. They just don't want you to know it. Um, so like I said if some people go and they could take a big wage out and you're going you do know like like if somebody wants to take home 1500 euro which would be a huge wage in Ireland right um, that's 6000 you know for a four week period but that's 10000 in total to pay that so it's an extra four grand on top of that whereas if you even cut that wage in half like well, how much do you really need for personal like what the fuck are you spending it on Um then you can start buying stuff like so that's where i don't take anything at all but i every time there's profit buy a machine buy a machine do you know you just constantly reinvest in yeah. the business and that scares a lot of people so i'd say first of all you have to invest in yourself so i've I, before i ever had a business in a position that i could buy things i had to, i spent all my own money on myself um to grow do you get me um you know you know whether it's courses whether it was um 
Like, even giving up time as well. It doesn't have to be money. Like, put yourself in a position to say, I'll work for free. And I'd done a thing with an internship, and I said, you know, I, I always remember the story. I had a guy 10 years ago now, and I couldn't understand... Um, some part of speed trend. And I said to him, could I call out to you someday for a chat? He says, yeah, no hassle. I think I told you this before. And we talked for an hour. And then just as I was leaving, he says, uh, that'll be 50 euro. And I was like, oh, fuck. And he floored me. like, And I said, oh, yeah, you know, I said, run down. But I had 65 in the account at the time. And I just remember going, fuck me. Would I have went out if I'd known that? And then I went, no, fuck it. It was, it was well it. worth it. And I do think money scares a lot of people as well. Like to talk about money, people in Ireland get very awkward when you talk about wages and stuff. And I think it's another thing when you when you open your mind to be comfortable with those conversations, uh, you grow far quicker. And again, you manifest different things into your life. You manifest people into your life. If you're afraid to set goals with money, um, and I think again in the money side of things, the amount of people who squander money is phenomenal. Like, it really is. Like mm. most people. And I remember years ago, like, you know, people, stream, do you remember Stupid Bounce? <laughs> uh-huh. <Matt>. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> like, I remember, yeah, gym membership could bounce, but they genuinely would say to you, just, sorry, it'll be in whatever. And that, there's no issue with any of that. But I, do, I did used to wonder, I'd go, and some of them wouldn't even have kids. And then, you know, I remember chatting to one in particular, and that's when obviously I realized, fuck. And I did a yoke on my, on my Snapchat years ago of a very simple five account system thing where you where you take your wage no matter how much it is. And the first thing is you'd obviously have to take out the absolute necessity of bills and then you'd have to move across to um, a savings account. But I used to tell them you should have two savings, even if it's 10 or a week, it didn't matter, five Wait. or a week. Because you can't replace time. So like you might think, sure, what's a 10 or a week? It's not worth my time saving it. And I'm going, yeah, but if I come back to you in five years time, you know, how much would be there? But I believe by just now even opening your mindset to that avenue of I'm going to manifest and create more money into my life and I'm going to set up a savings account no matter how little or how silly it feels, um, it's, a re- it's relative to my... So if everybody un- saved 5%, my 5% or your 5% could be very different to each other's or it could be different to someone else, but it doesn't matter. It means you, you're, you're even opening up an area of your brain to say, I'm going to invest that someday in something eh? or I'm going to go and hold it. It's like when I rented the car, I said, people would think that's silly. And I'm like, but that's another tax, a very, cl- very clear tax. Um, right off. Yeah. Do you know, you pay the car through that. Simple as it has to be done. And that brings a massive energy for you. So spend it on things that you, your your return is huge, like return on, on investment, return on energy. So from a people perspective, if I hang out with someone for an hour and I go away drained, I might be able to do any creative work for the rest of the day. If I spend too long on a client, that's uh, Are you talking about me. someone that you're hanging with that you don't like or a client? Well, just hanging with, like, it doesn't matter. You might really like them, <clears throat> but you're, you're, this, the hard chat might have to be had and said, like, you're really draining me. Like, you're, like I fucking care about you a lot, but you're killing me here. Like, I'm trying to help you um, and so on. Do you know? So you could have that chat, but... Just when you said, you know, about not liking someone, it wouldn't have to be that at all. It would just be the investment in that energy. Like having that conversation, what do we get from it? Like someone's not going to listen to a podcast and that's unless they get something out of it. And that's why I said to you loads of times, like I I always want to try and give something that they'll go, right, I'm going to take two or three things from that, you know, and I'm going to use it. Um, like Gogglebox is cool because it's just, we like people watching and we like looking. We don't learn anything from it. It's just cool for some reason to people watch. I think so many people just want to release though. Mm-hmm. You know, they just want to, I just don't want to think about anything because I'm just so fucking drained. I'm <laughs> out. Um, the end, you asked me before and I didn't get time to talk to you when you are texting me, but the NLP um, in Vegas that time, it blew my mind and it's changed an awful lot of ways. Explain to people what the NLP was. Um, Neuro linguistic programming. So the nervous system of our language basically is how they why describe did, it. First of all, why did you think of doing it? What, what made you want to go do that course? I probably and... felt a little bit forced um, to get a title as in to be able to talk about this kind of stuff versus just be me and use all my life experience to talk about this stuff. So that was probably a the reality like I was going and somebody I remember the coach saying why did you feel why do you think you needed that and I says it's not that I needed it but I'm really interested in it and at least it just cuts a lot of bullshit out too if someone says you know what are you a master trainer and NLP and blah 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 
the more now that I'm doing it, I'm probably like I probably won't even tell them that. Do you know that kind of way? What anyways, was it like? Of course. What did you do? It's all about your unconscious mind, and the thing that stood out to me was that ninety five percent of what we do is unconscious behavior, and that's very scary when you think about it. And I remember five or six years ago, a lot of people think Jim Carrey's mad and might be a little bit over the top sometimes, but. He, he said something along these lines and he was talking about, are people, are we really here and are we really awake? Mm. And it probably was too much too soon and people were like, he's a fucking lunatic. <coughs> but since I came home, I can see that, I can see the trance. So like, um, they talked about the unconscious, the four stages of learning was um, conscious incompetence, unconscious uh, competence, and then you had um, basically them in reverse. What does that, what the does easiest that mean? way would be that if I said to you, uh, can you write with your left hand? You're going, right, even though I'm consciously thinking of it, I still can't do it. Oh yeah, I get you. And if I keep going at this specific task, eventually it'll become an unconscious behavior. So if we're a couple and we keep getting into rows and you keep reacting the very same way, every single time we fight, you go back to the same thing. That's an unconscious, uh, deep behavior that's in root within you. Like a habit. Yeah. You form a habit of fighting. Yeah. So again, when we go touching on the energy piece, it was like for every time I sit consciously knowing in this energy that this is not a good space for me and I allow myself to be in that space, I am going to run the risk of developing um, new habits and I'm also going to run the risk of lowering, I mean, self-worth, self-esteem, all of that stuff as well. Um, the negative self-talk that everybody talks about, it's everywhere now, you know, you're able to see all this information, but it was just a little bit more science behind the true effects of the way talking negative to yourself or talking, you know, um, very poor manifests and ideas. And <coughs> the, the biggest piece of the NLP for them was removing traumas, all of this type of stuff. Um, essentially, it becomes an extremely guided. I've done it a few times since I came home and had huge success. Probably even for me, I'm still a bit skeptical with it, but can't deny it when people are texting in saying, Whatever he did the last, it was unreal, but done it with a group and it's essentially that when you're removing trauma, this is a course teaching you to, to yeah, get if you were trauma away from I, other people, not yourself. Yeah. Like one, one lady said I have, you know, she had an unbelievable grief from her husband dying and to be able to remove that, she has to go back and relive that. And then you're trying between the two, e, she has to come up with the learning. She has to be able to relook at that situation in a very different way. Um, I suppose I'll give you this one. Like, um, she blamed herself that she couldn't, she didn't do enough. He, he, she was out with the house. He had a stroke. She got to the hospital and she felt so guilty, a lot of grief because she said she just felt helpless sitting there as he died <laughs> and they switched the machine off. And then anger and resentment kicked in towards nurses and so on. But when we went back and I got her to uproot the, the story, naturally enough, she's crying. That's all, you know, releasing a bit and whatnot. And then I was like, so the anger piece, why are you angry at the nurses? I'm like, well, they could have done more. And I said, okay, do you think they consciously and deliberately didn't do more? Oh God, no, no, no. Okay, so now what do you think? Yeah, and then, she, you know, you can see this relief in her body leaving. She's like, oh God, I never thought of that. I suppose I was just too caught up in, again, her own emotions. So then you're like, okay, so you're happy with that and move that and you just keep moving through it and moving through it. And it was, it's a timeline therapy piece that they put on it. Now, I, I've always gone off script with it. But if you stick to their script, like, you know, it's obviously for the easiest as a system at the end of the day. But I would have said to her over there, look, I won't be following scripts, to be honest. I'll be trying to use a bit of intuition with that person as well, you know. Um, and it, it's it's quite fascinating to do. Like, we we did it over there. Um, and in, with that emotional piece, the same thing keeps popping up is the minute you can take the learnings from a situation, you leave that negative uh, belief or that negative emotion behind. And when you actually revisit that and say to the person, I want you to go back now, go back into the timeline. So it's a very high visualization tool as well. Do you get me? Mm. You can imagine your eyes closed there and I'm asking you to go right back, like physically visualize like a drone footage of you dropping back into that scenario. How did you feel? Who was there? Blah, blah, blah. And then we take you out of that and we bring you up, you know, visualize going up into the sky. Okay, now... Is there anything you could have done different? You know, if you were there again, what would you do different? And so on. Do you know? So you're fleshing it out that way as well. Um, but the trance piece was just the biggest piece for me that I went, holy fuck, the 
amount of people who are living in a trance is scary. And a trance can be just where we simply might fall into a um, a pattern where we just bury our head in the sand, we're working, 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 and then something stops us or else we go on a holiday and we look back in at what we've done in the last three months and go, what the fuck am I at? That was awful stupid. I should be doing this instead of this. So that's essentially a trance. Now, I know that's not going to hit anybody listening to the oak. It's, it's, they think that's too basic until all of a sudden you stop and you say, no, no, assess every last move, every last thought that you have and very quickly you'll figure out where these trances and these pieces are falling into your life. Again, you know, some people, entrepreneur pages, they'll, you know, they'll go and riddle an employee and they'll be talking about, you know, clocking in nine to five, doing your, but it's not for everybody. Like everybody's obviously trying to get this freedom, but there's nothing wrong with working for someone as long as you continually progress. So even in our own place, I said to you before, it can be quite difficult having friends working for you or staff because if you're pushing and pushing and pushing all that time, you're always pushing that boundary. And, and then, you find that hard in the past or have you, like, is that difficult? Finding staff and keeping staff? or Yeah, 100%. It's my biggest regret out of all of business stuff I've done. What? You just can't. You, you can't have a best friend or you can't have uh, them as an employee. You just can't do it. And the only way you can do it, which I have had to start fresh after Miami with the crew that I've left that works for me, is uh, talking out a very, very, very clear boundary between when, we, when we're in work mode versus friendship. So I, the care and empathetic side of me, you know, essentially over the years, like I would have lost two or three really good friends. And at the end of the day, it's because you, you try to put business involved in a friendship relationship and that's where it gets so tricky. And again, obviously the main reason most people fall out is because they can't separate emotion either. So they get very caught up in the emotional state versus dealing with the facts of it. And then business is very factual, which can seem very cold you know, compared to a friendship. And that's been the hardest. So definitely going forward, I mean, it's, the, them days are over. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not engaging. I'm not crossing the line. I'm not giving, you know, I, I, I broke boundaries as well with financial stuff, with helping them out, with hating to see someone struggle with, and then it gets thrown back in your face and you're going, yeah, oh look, that was my fault. I shouldn't have even bothered reaching out for that lending hand anymore. And it's I think, hard to spend time with people all day and not get close to them though. <laughs> Very, yeah, like it's a constant assessment of, you know, because you're trying to give, you're trying to give a little bit of feedback as well without them taking a personal and um, it's a, it's really hard, like, and I can see now why people who have a lot of staff just are like, boom, very cold, but I believe too, like I have a different kind of business and we have, we have, we've always, we've always worked very hard and trying to keep a very good team, do you know, because they'll always do more and they do do more for me, like they're. It's hard to find that balance then. Oh man, it's it's just it's it's it's, I mean, it's not impossible, but it's constant. <laughs> like someone had said to me before, Matt's probably having having a heart attack here. <laughs> um, it's been said to me before. It's hard to get people to stay on the bus when you're driving it hard, and like you're passionate about your business and you're trying to do it perfectly and you're trying to you have a way of doing things and your way obviously works mm. and try and get people on board with you. But when you're doing what you're doing, it's a very individual thing, isn't it? Well, just on that piece, like, I think a, a lot of people don't, some people are really scared of change as well. Like, really scared of it, man. Like, it makes them behave in a very different way than they've ever behaved before. Um, erratic behavior, like, just like, you know, some people say, oh, throwing toys out of pram, but that's quite an insulting thing to say to someone. It's like, the truly, it's like, like, I learned uh, even this year a lot, like, about certain types of personalities, like a type I personality is, like, such a, such a great hard worker to have for you. Um, however, when, once once they know their place and their role, they'll lock into that, what I believe is a trance, and they'll rock up, they'll do their job, and you're like, you know, they'll think there's no room for error or that you have nothing to pick out of it. But the same type I will really struggle once you bring in a bit of change or a lot of change. And I, I, I did a, bring in a lot of change in the last few years, and... It's been it's been really tough because relationships get tarnished and you know people bring in emotion and you know they just you lose friends then and it's been like even it's hard to have emotion and drive on a business as well do you know like genuinely this time next year and I 
I've no doubt that we'll be talking and I'll have several clinics, but I won't personally get to know any of them staff. I'll, I'll be a very friendly, very friendly boss and I'll have a very good ethos with my staff and I'll continue that what I have with my own group. But I certainly have a loyalty to my own crew now because it's like they've been there from the start. <coughs> Do you know that kind of way? But even with them, like, and they'll say it, it can be difficult if someone new comes in, but it's like, yeah, it's just a cunt. It really is. It's just so hard. And are you hiring these people and having to train them yourself? Or are you... Well, have we're you starting assist- with this interns thing now and... That's why I first my first email back to them was I said, well, fair play to you for applying because I made it very clear to see what would happen. I said, this is an unpaid role. And I got, you know, um, maybe 20 inquiries on that. I only put it up one day on my story, but like say 20 people inquired. Then, and I said, well, the fact that you've inquired already, knowing it was an unpaid role means you're already, that's a big piece that I'm looking for. Not looking for someone to work for nothing. But it's something I did. And, I, and I'm trying to get an ethos where people are like, I love coming to work. There's, I love the idea behind what we're trying to do. Money doesn't come into it. And then the money then follows. So if you focus solely on working really good, being a very passionate person, you are going to get paid more by wherever you are. I'm not about me now. I'm not about in any job. Like every boss, Barry's a complete narcissist, wants to see a person take stress off his mind and stress off his body. And he's only looking for ways to pay you more as long as you can take a stress off him mm. or her, you know? Yeah. Um. So yeah, the next few weeks will be, and it's very scary too. It's like the the quality of the service is my, is my number one. So if it's not possible to scale it to the level that it needs to be, well then fuck it, I'm not doing it. That's just it. And, and, Probably isn't possible, but I can definitely be better than any treatment you'll get around this country anyways. And that's not in any way. That's just do, you, do you think it's possible to keep going at the rate you're at? As long as you factor in breaks, it's very easy. Like it's, I um, have not seen you take a break in a while. Ah, stop. Would you go ahead? I'm not sure. About. The last time you were on a break, it was when, when, when I went up to Antrim. You went on that holiday. That's the last time you were on a break. And you're at the... No, but a break for me could be like... Sure, I'm blessed with the retreat as well. Like they're all bricks. Like they're just complete switch offs. Do you know what I mean? That's like, like me going out and sitting in the backyard. No, it's not. yeah. Well, it's if you build a space that you can just like you have people in the treat, retreat. So you go home from work, and you're helping people at home as well. Yeah, well, I st- I pulled. Like, you probably noticed I didn't put an up on that because I have same with that. I had to really sit with that whole business model and say, right, this is probably not sustainable. And that's what I mean. There, when you think I'm not taking a break, that was me <laughs> recognizing this is not sustainable. I'm pulling pin here now for a minute. Um, I can't be doing, you know, all this stuff in the gym and then come back and then do that in the evenings. Not possible. It's great and all, but no. Fuck that. Where does most of your energy go? It actually goes, uh, well, uh, it, it goes into me in the sense of managing myself as in managing to make sure I'm not like running around like a headless chicken or I am getting burnt out or I may, potentially might get sick. Or any of that stuff. Um, like I've definitely stepped back from that energetic work that I was doing in the clinic. You know, from a very mm. calm and perspective or whatever it is you might call it. Um, because that was killing me. Now that was too, you could, it wasn't possible. So that's why the system we've built at the minute is getting huge results. And I will refer a lot of people to Alan to get some really good energetic work done there. Would you be able to give me a rough percentage of people that go to you with an injury? And after you talk to them for a while, you realize it's not a physio they need or a clinic, it's a therapist. I, it's huge. It's probably 80% maybe. It's that much? Yeah, yeah. Um, like and, even and the can ones you read who that straight away? Ah, yeah, because as soon as, you, there's just a few little markers like that you'll use. And as soon as you see them, and that's the great thing, I've, all the staff have been educated on that now and they know, they know instantly as well, like, you know, um, but that's why we went with the slightly longer term project was because I know years ago, if I was going through like even one injury, shin splints, whatever, years ago, and I had a lot of high adrenaline stuff going on at the time, I was, you know, getting sued by a lad and I was like... Why was he suing you? Says he claimed, we claimed he fell down the stairs in the gym. And, oh yeah, that prick. Do you know, and it was like there was such high adrenaline in the body that I was holding a lot of tension and it just shin splints was not the injury I got that time. 
But I remember going to a Reiki girl and whatever, she fixed the two at the time, but then it comes back again until that issue is over. So sometimes people have stuff in their life too that I'm like, we just have to work out how to manage around this. And then when that's over, we'll be sound. There's loads of people message me about they'd done breath work with you mm. and it blew their mind and they weren't expecting it. Like, what is that about? Like, uh, uh, and one lad messaged me and said that he went to it thinking it was airy-fairy and he said he was in a ball after it. Mm. One session. That particular one is a very high adrenaline breeding thing, so it's quite, it picks up and picks up and gets very intense. And Are you doing it one-on-one -on -one or with a group? That's with a group, yeah. And what's it, what, like, what is it? It's done to a chant as well. Now, they don't have to do the actual chant. They just have to follow the specific breath thing and the chant that's going on consistently in the background is picking up and picking up. Um, look, I'll be honest, I definitely can... I, I've been able to channel energy for years and I, I do get very awkward about speaking about in public, but there's no doubt about it. Like, your lads have said it. They've said... Like, I get this absolute... Either heaviness over me if I'm working on some person or I get this unbelievable <sighs> charge of adrenaline. And... One guy in particular, and he's a top county player, like, and he was doing it and doing it, and he was a real suppressor, like, you know, and I put my hand on his chest, and he said, that was it, he just, his body, and I deliberately put my hand on the chest, trying to channel that bit of strength into him, and that adrenaline. So when he was there, how did you know to put... You just see, just just all this, holding back, this fear, he's supposed to be going a lot harder, a lot faster with the breath, on a physical level, and just not, wouldn't go there, just this constant protective mode all the time, and getting injured then because of that, like holding his breath all the time and overthinking every day, every training, doubting himself, all these traits were coming forward. And then when I just channeled that adrenaline, it's like you just, you cut fucking this weight off them and it's like, just go for it, just stop worrying, just get thick and push through and flush out all that shitty cords all over your body. And like he was, he was on that video and he says, just got up off the ground. And he'd been doing it about eight weeks of treatment. And it was that day that just changed it. I'm sure he was done. Dusted after that, like flying. So whatever form of release happens, I don't know. Where'd you learn to do that? Didn't, just kept coming over the years, kept getting stupidly in tune. And like I always responded to tough times getting quite um, intense. And over the last year or two, especially, I went, it doesn't, it served me well on a level of getting shit done, but not for long term for my body. Do you know? Um, and I, I don't know maybe in the last few years a few things happened and I was just had to take life a little bit more serious and then that probably radiates off me sometimes and it can be you know I think mm. so I'd be talking to me, my sister Elizabeth right <laughs> and loads of people message me right no don't laugh at me and uh, like people message me that I went to you right because they know we're, we're close and we get on but uh, they think you're a wizard like, not a Gandalf wizard, but they say that you, you have a gift. Like. I know you don't like talking about no. stuff like that. No, look, I know I do. Yeah, I have. I've done it privately with people and I, I hate saying I don't know why I hate saying it out loud. It's a very touchy subject with some people. Why? But can yeah, you not, I have. Can you not have the best of what words? Yeah, you can, I suppose. No, look, I do. I know I do. There, I've said it. I've done it. I've done it with everybody around me. I've You've done it with me? Yeah. Yeah, I just used to I used to pick up on energies when I was a child and I used to be like a fucking lunatic going around the place. Couldn't sit on certain materials, couldn't wear certain clothes, was highly sensory. And went to that lady I might have mentioned before, my healer, and sure just blew my mind the shit she was able to tell me and stuff that has just kept unfolding in my life. And it's like, fuck me. <coughs> and she keeps at me saying, you just need to accept this fully and go down this line. And I am a bit, but I haven't learned how to protect my own energy. So I keep getting injured then because of that. So I could work on you and then I go home and I'm wrecked after doing that to you. But you're bouncing around and you're fixed, but I'm fucked then. And they talk about, all healers talk about different things or they're trying to protect their own bodies and protect their own energy, but I'm just not there yet. So I've had to take a little step back and say, all right, can't, can't do it all at the minute. So just why you've just gone a lot more into the, the machine side. And there's lots of programs on that that you can run for emotional programs as well. You run them through ear clips into your ears. Hmm. What does that do? What's that feel like? It's like it, you only feel a tiny tingle, but the brain, the, the frequency going in changes the, the frequency that you're operating and thinking at. So the, like within the program, I talk a lot about the vibration chart. So like shame and guilt and all these emotions are extremely low. They'll You'll vibrate at about 25. 
25 hertz, for example, we'll run certain settings through you that could be 600 or 700 hertz. So you can imagine the, the lit uplift your body's going to feel. Um, but, uh, yeah, the vibrational chart is something that someone should look because very quickly it'll just open your eyes to that uh, energetic side of the world. Do you know, I think it was the 1700s where a guy had said he was healing people or something like that and he, he was able to conduct energy and of course they said if we can't see it coming out of it then we know you're lying but what do you mean see it I was coming the, out at the time like there was a big story behind it that he was called up in front of the lords and they said if we don't physically see something coming out of your hands what everybody is saying you can do then we're going to banish you from the land like but that's when the first that's what they say that was the day that energy was completely dismissed from he, any form of um, healing the body so it's weird when we're basically just energy. Like every cell, well, every atom is are, just energy. For those who are skeptical of it, um, for those who, are, who you know, are quite in tune or listen to their gut a lot, um, most people are afraid to go with that decision to figure out if they're right or if they were wrong. And unfortunately, to figure that out, you possibly might have to make some mistakes too. So you have to be able to distinguish whether it's a conscious emotion reaction. So I could meet you which happened at the start. I had a lot of times where I might have been burnt in the past, so I'm just keeping my cards close to my chest and I'm assessing you and I'm testing that relationship and I'm doing little conscious things hmm. to figure Am you I out. Passing? Am I passing? And then you get to a point going, yeah, no, I just needed to put that <coughs> previous past shit behind and just assess for what I feel when I'm with you. Um, and it can be a hindrance at the same time as well. It can be um, a great shock. But it can, it can be a big hindrance too. You know, when you're around someone, then you get this big pull on your energy and you're like, you just look like an odd man then. Do you know the way, leave. say, you watch someone yawn and you start yawning? Mm. And do you know the way you can get a vibe off people? Mm. Like, fear and stuff is contagious, isn't it? Like, have you, have you noticed that there's a, there's a, a fear, there's a weirdness going around? Like, people are all fucking mad nowadays. Or is that just me? Am I just thinking that because I'm in a negative point of view? Like when you watch the news, I know you said not watch the news, but it's very hard because it's shoved down your face. You have this LGBT, blue hair brigade. The whole place has gone mad. It's a tiny little, all these tiny minorities. We, we all have to bow to them. Like, and I think in the world we live in, everyone does I don't think most people care what anyone does anymore. Mm. I think everyone's living that live, but there's just so much negativity and nastiness people worrying about stuff that in my head in the real world don't fucking matter I'm saying this stuff all the time now I'm sorry like I live in the real world like the real world is not what's been portrayed mm. in the media like the whole world's gone crazy I think it's this thing's just catching on people are getting excited over nothing and in real life it's, it can't be like that like I think a lot of people as well if you were to show them proof of something that might be quite scary they will do anything to convince themselves that it's not true because it would it's too much to deal with you know um I, all i'm gonna say is I, again it's not probably not gonna offend anyone but sure it's just uh, my opinion that's all anyone can give you um, <laughs> i always remember um you know in school or each year there was always three or four really um just genuinely odd lads in the class or whatever. And Me. they were the ones who just wouldn't play, wouldn't wouldn't ever, you know, they weren't into sport, right? That's grand. Um, and again, we're not painting anything here with a brush, but like, they were just odd. It was just, that was it. They were just odd. And mm. they'd keep to themselves. They'd never speak. You'd never get to know them. Um, and I'm after seeing a few now who, like in the last while, have said, they've said, oh, that's, that person there is in this LG, whatever. Um that big, what's the thing called? LGBTQ or whatever. Yeah, so, um, all of that there is based on feelings. Like, you'll hear them. Well, I feel like that. Why can't you respect that? It's like, why? And, and the thing is, it's like, why are we just getting folk distracted? So, um, if you're trying to push something that is involved in feelings, what you're trying to really say is, um, the stronger person's feelings are not being accounted for. So if I truly say, like, you're really upsetting me coming into work, asking me to call you this and call you that, and next week you might want to change that and call you this, I, I find that very upsetting. That won't be taken into consideration. The only thing will be considered is the weaker person's um, opinion. Hmm. So my opinion is 
there's something I miss. So this is completely separate now, like to anybody who's gay or or lesbian or anything, right? As I said to you before, I I said on my story, I don't care what you do in your own time at home, but like don't force things on us. That'd be like me if forcing someone to work 80 hours a week or forcing them to hmm. give up this for this and this. Oh, well, I find that difficult in my mental health. And I'm like, well, I don't. So you better do it. But that would be the the entrepreneur's mindset then pushing it on a weaker individual again and that wouldn't be stood for. So again, a government will want you to, they don't want entrepreneurs, they don't want stronger people. It's easier if we have a, if we create divide and they're certainly creating divide with Absolutely. this whole thing. And if you look at the Facebook comments, as I said, anytime I just have, it's just something I do, I just pop in and I look and I just go, fuck me, the amount of anger is phenomenal. But it's all again a big distraction. Um, I don't think any decisions like from sex is like as regards uh, non-binary and all that stuff. They just need to get a life. I don't give a shit. Like they'll just find, they'll find something else to be, have a feeling about in mm. a few years time because they're, they're not in a great place in their head. And yeah, that's true as God. It's like, it'd be like me going in, respect me. Like just, I, Vicky likes to peg me up the arse five times a week. You should like that too. <laughs> yeah, but it's just, the, it's just like, can you not she just do your own way. thing? Do you know, just do yeah. your own thing and don't be don't be this weirdo where you're demanding that everybody. But the piece that said where I would find quite confusing is um like look, the the the, the Burke lad showing up at the school, right? Mm. God love him as well, like straight up again, it's not even be judgmental, but there's something amiss with him, right? But that's not saying that he's wrong. No. And it's very scary that um Again, this is a trance like, but sometimes you have to stop for a second and go, hang on for a minute. He's actually been thrown out of court because he genuinely is just saying, I don't want to call him that. Hmm. I shouldn't have to call him that. Like his but, rights so are being I would trampled love to, know. to make someone else feel better. Yeah, it's all feelings, it's feelings, feelings. Yeah. Like life, but life exactly, you just said it's not fair, but that person coming in saying, I just want to be called this. It's like, but she'll want to be called something else next week. Yeah. You can always... I, can I just ask a quick question there? I'm sorry, yeah. just on that. Would you consider that the same as um, the way we were always told? You can't wear earrings in school. That's just the fucking way it is. You can't have your hair with highlights. That's just the way it is. I think it's essentially the same thing as like in the Enoch Burke situation. That No, you just have to deal with this. It's the way school always has been. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah it's like... <laughs> It's the bigger thing is again is the force and you on something. So it's like years ago saying to the child like we, who wouldn't play PT if you or um, P if you're asking them forcing them to do it and forcing them to do anything. But there's something else going on. It's bigger than that as regards there's someone else behind defending that ethos, not defending the school. It's defending the ethos of it and going. We're going to make sure that these weaker individuals who seem to be struggling left, right and center with their mental health, they're not the individual. They're certainly, but put this way, you're not going to find a, a high achieving entrepreneur turn around and I will be blown away if you do. You will not find one that is turning around and making these ridiculous statements. You will not. Mm. So that's where you, you're, you're now beginning to categorize based on what, you're, what is coming to you. You're not painting anyone with a brush. You're actually categorizing them. You know, and I, I, even the whole Sam Smith thing, like, what just what has it got to do with you about Fisher? Like, you wanted to be called dead. Like, just worry about you, not worry about anybody else. But again, um, they're just they're just actually pussies. They're <laughs> Did just you see pussies. The like, them and them mean. I seen when Steve Mac them and them. <laughs> <laughs> like it just makes life is complicated I know, but it's because they're already battling and they're like I just need something else to distract myself and if I can get attention and I can see I have a purpose now you see everyone you listen to me hang on we've had to be the weirdo for long enough you fucking listen to me I'm not sure how I feel grand but just get out of my face do you know or if you just focused on you you will figure that shit out mm. in the end do you know but they, no, they definitely have, they, they are the weirdos. I don't care. They were the weirdos in the 2000s that they just, people are like, it's just something a bit odd with him or her. I was that guy. I, I don't want to be them. Oh, we, don't, we don't know how it's going to turn out. Turn out all right so far. <laughs> yeah, but they're still weird. You're not weird. <laughs> Everyone's weird. 
That's yeah, the thing. Just some people just keep it to themselves. We all have yeah, our weird things. Not, but that's not even weird. It's actually going. I'm actually getting to a point going. I can't. But as you said, life's complicated enough. Like so, it's getting to the point going. No, I'd actually rather be at home, and that's what COVID did too. It kind of made people go quite lazy, but it also made people go. Lord, I have I've been putting up with some hypocons for a long time. I don't ever want to see them again. And it it, be, it became easy and drama free, and it is glorious when you learn to get rid of negative people. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's probably one of the most important things I ever learned. Just if someone's making your life more difficult, you just, they just have to go. Life's too hard. Mm-hmm. You know, it's hard enough to do what you're doing and get to where you need to go without people constantly sucking the life out of you. Well, I give I give people online a little task, and I say to them, if you get anxious this week, um. Just, just sit, just stop for a minute and just try and try and figure it out there and then what caused that, right? And you would not believe how many people, and this again is the trans piece, they're like, holy God, Shen, I realised this week it was actually as soon as I'm asked to do this or this, I get awful anxious. And they couldn't figure it out before. So that's a trance. It's like, because we're, we're, we are going around with our head in the clouds and we don't see the stuff that's unfolding in front of us. And w- what causes anger and hate was... Where if you cop something and you were just genuinely coming from a good place trying to tell someone to wake up, they w- they might feel that as an attack towards them. They might feel that you're very intense. They might feel that, I don't want to hear this right now. I have other stuff going on and I can't cope to think that they're forcing a vaccine or, that, you know, that stuff is too out of my scope right now. And I, uh, and they just genuinely, and I actually, I actually got to a point very early on to respect that going, you know, I get that. That's fair enough. So I just became a mute and just focused Which as is, hard as I could on me. It's a difficult thing. Like, you're not saying that you're just walking into a room and going, hey, I've noticed you're a this, 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 no, and this no. is your problem. You're having conversations with people. I oh, know, it's and they're asking it's you for talks. They're asking you for your opinion and they don't want it. Well, no, they would. Like, they won't, not going to pay again a tip for a business. I've had one guy in this mastermind thing and he said, did you reach, when you increased your prices, did you get much pushback? And I says, you'll only get pushback from people who don't want to pay in the first place. So of course there's a there's a lot there's a point of uh, a price where people will be like ah that's fucking ridiculous you have to be able to make sure that the value is increasing if you increase your price in some way shape or form so that's all we've ever tried to do is we keep increasing that value that value that value now what I've made the mistake in the last six months is we've increased the value insanely but we didn't increase the price so now I have to just make a decision going I have to make sure that we don't end up working like lunatics for the same money. Because that won't work out from a staff perspective either. So there are the things I'm balancing at the minute. Um, but when you get overwhelmed, like that's where I would still go. I'm just walking away from everything. But that's all overwhelm does. That's anxiety at the end of the day. But you need it to drive you. Anxiety? Yeah, well, you just you need that. Like we call it that now. Um, like what, the other day, I was just thinking that straight up, I'll be honest, right? The, the retreat, we built that and it was a um, savage way of doing it through a business, right? Um, it's left me really comfortable in regards. I'm not sitting there worrying saying I need bums on seats. I was lying there the other night on the couch and I said, comfort is a fucking bastard. People want comfort. I'm like, no, you don't. It's a, it's like the opposite end of the scale. I'd rather be up to my neck there now in money going, shit, I need, because that would be comfort your driver. Comfort lazy. Yeah, that would be your mm-hmm. driver then to say, okay, Got to start posting Instagram. Got to start. And I find that myself too, even with Instagram. I just vanish for days on end now. And it's like, it's not good in a way because you have to keep consistent, right? But then the other side is you're going, we're actually gone past that Instagram stage now. We're into the phase where you were just telling a fella, go down to him. So it's cut all your advertising costs. It's cut the work that it's taken to get the people in. There's no hard sell anymore. And again, that breeds a comfort. It's like, it's very difficult driving on. I'd love to be able to just pay someone to come in and just take over. Do you do you hate doing Instagram? Again, only in the last two years I said I it's not that I hate it, no. It just became I don't know. Do you watch it? Um, no. If you were to look at your feed. Like I'll go through phases and I'll get this really good thing. No, I love putting out good content. I love doing that. And I'll get this burst. And then energy wise, I might go. Am I, fo- am I forcing something here? I'll, I'll ask all these very, I'll always, I'll stop and ask myself. I, I make sure I never fall into that trance piece. I ask myself deep questions like, you know, am I happy in this relationship? Am, am I happy with all my staff? Or am I, if I go to war, have I got enough people around me that's going to come with me? Is there any cunts that I need to get rid of? Um, 
and I'll challenge them relationships that are looking a bit ropey then. And then very quickly you'll see that side, how they respond and that will tell you all. And then all you're doing is, you know now that you, you haven't put that inevitable off. You're like, well, that was always going to happen anyways when I moved to the next stage of my life. And that was also, that can be quite tough too. What's the most difficult thing you've had to do in the last year? Um, like I had staff issues, yeah. And it was like, I don't know if you can notice me coughing them on my stories for ages, but I didn't, it took an awful toll and it affected my throat a lot. And um, yeah, sure, just lost, like, you know, you lose, you lose a good friend because of a staffing issue and you're like, you, you can't win. You're never going to win. You try to come from a, a caring perspective and then you ina- you disable that individual because they'll lean on that power and, or that energy. And then if you try to come from a, a quite standoffish thing saying, look, I'm going to support you in every way you need here, but I need you to do A, B and C. You just can't win. You, you So that's why I said that's been the hardest thing I've ever done. And if I was to unwind time, I would go back and I would just be able to say, right, we need to be so crystal clear on this. Um, we can't be, uh, like, we can't divulge personal information and I can't be stepping in to help you in manners that I shouldn't, do you know? Like, stupid stuff, I would have bought a fucking car for somebody. Um, and they said, oh, what? the bank said, I'll get the loan in, in a month. I'm like, Grand, look, I'll buy you the car. Now, you know, you mean a lot to me, whatever. But make sure, you know, give me the money back. So there's nine months then waiting for it back. Like, that's crossing boundaries then. You're going, was I wrong for giving the money or was were they wrong for absolutely abusing that kindness? And then, you know, so mm. stupid little things like that over the years. You're like, no, nah, fuck that. You can't, you can't step in anymore. And that's the biggest skill and the, the best thing you can do for anybody as a friend now is like know when to step in to offer support to allow them to pick themselves up versus stepping in and taking all their worries away. Because you only, you just enable this fucking retarded, weak, useless fucking breed of an individual. Because then they'll always be like, well, why can't you help me? I was like, I can't keep doing that. I can't step in every time. You have to do something for yourself. So then... <coughs> It's like judging that distance, like, you know, will I ring them or will I text them, see if they're okay? No, I need them. I only talked to them yesterday now. They have to ride this one out. And it's a constant, it's draining. <laughs> Fucking drain the shit It's probably out an awful lot more draining for you because you're that guy. You yeah, know, you, I, you're, you're known as the guy that helps people. So I'd say in your circle, I'm probably guilty of it as well, you know, just if you're ringing you know, you're, you're the guy that helps people. Well, it's funny because a few like relationships, some of them say, oh, you only want me when you want something. And I'm like, wow. No one, anybody you've ever seen at my house, anybody you've ever seen helping, they get paid over and beyond. I've never had a favor. I, I don't take them. I won't accept them. No, nope. there has to be an exchange. So if I do that for you, you make sure you ring me now till I do the next one or we lock in something that I'll do. I love giving favors. Again, what's that doing? It's crossing boundaries because now... You're given all these favors, which breeds this um, expectancy, you know, and then that breaks a friendship. Then it's like fucking sure I was a need. I sh- nah. maybe I should have said you, you need to pay me for that. So that's something I've, I, I've really lo- I've learned in the last year, six months. Um, and as I said to you before, I mean, we'll talk about it again in the future, but like. I went through something the last two years and so many people were talking about me and it was, I, I had to like batten down the hatches and go, okay, I'm going to have to bite my tongue with this one. I'll tell my story someday, but right now, talk, do what you want, say what you want. I have to protect myself here now. I have to protect the people around me. I have to protect my business. So it, it, it created this unreal, um, the vibration I r- would radiate off was essentially a a slight resentment and anger because I, I'd get a trigger and I'd see someone who I know was talking about me and I'm like, I'd love to kill you. I'd love to, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to act in that. I'm not going to fight with you. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm just going to protect my energy and move forward and try and go in this positive, positive way all the time. And it's like being that bigger person. But in the last three months, that really hit me hard going, wow, it's been such a drive in the last two years, like between the house and business and I'm like actually looking forward to not taking that in serious anymore 
You don't know how to not take anything serious. No, no. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the most driven fucker. I yeah, don't but that's know how different. That's totally it. different. That's a completely different, right? Is it not the same thing? No, a very weak individual who hangs out with someone who wants to drive on finds it exhausting because you're exhausting. Like, that's what I'd be saying. You're, the fu- you're exhausting. I find you exhausting. So, like, not you, <laughs> but that person. I'm like, well, don't be around me then. If, I'm, if I set a goal and I, and I drive towards it, please just... Go. Help me or leave me alone. Yeah, just like why, just leave me alone is right, or let me get my goal done. But again, speaking from an energy perspective, that is something else I've learned. It's like Jesus, yeah, you're right. When I did flick into them modes, you can come across quite intense or quite serious. And I was like, no, that's not me. I am. I can be, and I am a funny fucker. And it's as simple as that. I'm not afraid. I've always do been the class clown. And, do you ever huh? call yourself a sign and say, "Hey, uh, slow down." Yeah, you'd be checking in the whole. Chill the fuck out now. Yeah, but. Yeah, it was. Look, it's. I suppose it's, it, it. Pressure can bring um, you to be a little bit serious too, you know, because you're like, fuck, I'm going to have to really spend a lot of money. If I don't get this, or if a, if a recession comes, like, we're under pressure. But no, things are good now. And um, it's like that initial drive is, is done with. But certainly buying into other people's ego where you get this attitude back, it's like, you know, you can keep that. I ain't taking that on. I'm just going to stay being me and I'm very caring and that's just it. I'm not going to buy back into your, your crap like. What's, you the, know? what's the most reoccurring issue people have coming to you? <coughs> well, back pressure, pain would be or? the biggest of all time. 100%. And is that from anything in particular, do you think? Or is it just injury? Ah, well, it can be from the most obvious, which is just your own, which are the pelvic tilt that you have. For example, you know, this big compression in the lower back. But... It's as I said, it's after session one to two. If that hasn't cleared, because again, the treatment is so extensive that it will remove physical issues so fast. Like you see the testimonials, like they're not lying. Like, you know, county players not able to train of a Tuesday night for the last whatever, and then they rock up, bang, bombing it. And um, that's not fluke. But when that injury won't shift, then as I said, that's where you now look into the further. You go, right, your breeding has been affected by something, and we have to figure that out. Um, and that's where you might start your whole date in the back type thing or um, again that gift side of things or whatever you want to call it I get these strong feelings and I'm working with certain people and I say look just bear with me I'm just going to say what comes to me here and I could get quite specific then and they're a bit kind of taken back on how would you know that I say I don't know it's just when I tune into you or I try to work very I don't want to get aggressive with you yeah, but like you, you, again, it's like you know whether to match fire with fire or to diffuse it a different way. But sometimes, if someone is like to give it a typical word, a bully or has been used to behaving that way and getting away with it, maybe no one has ever met fire with fire before, or um, or then maybe it was the complete opposite. Maybe nobody ever just heard them out, and that can be a big part. Like oftentimes, someone will snap, and I just let them off, and they're like a loon taking a mic. All right, well. What's really going on? Go ahead. What's the problem? Oh, well, fucking. They'll spit it out. That's a Tony Robbins tactic. That's NLP as well, by the way. You know when to draw it out. Do you need to trigger the individual to piss them off to get the truth out? And then you cut straight to the, the chest then, you know? And then you can fix it so much quicker. With all the stuff that you do, did you find it hard to go back playing with Lomans and the team? Is that hard? Or is it just uh, a release for you? Yeah, like uh, even this year, as I said, it's been the first time in years that I've been able to actually go down and switch off. You know, genuinely it has been. And it's been run so well as regards the structure. It's like, you know, it's a real, um, the guys involved would be army men and stuff. And it's like just religious. It's just bang, bang, bang. So a standard is set, which is brilliant. You know, the everything in the, is laid out. There's a professionalism there. So you don't have to. They're all super army soldiers, are they? Yeah, like it doesn't seem to be so organized. Like it's even before sessions, they'll text in exactly what's going to happen in that session and they won't skew off that time at all. Like it's fucking that's deadly. Cool. Yeah, it's lethal. Whereas that's where I used to get quite frustrated before I, I would try and maybe push a standard and then you'd look like you're just giving out, but you're not. You're just wanting to push it on. What's the most angry you were in the last two weeks? To which? In the last two weeks, have you ever been angry? Like if you ever get nah, pissed off. done, man, done. You don't get pissed off? Mm-mm. Not doing it to me, buddy, anymore. Genuinely. And what do you do? So you're... you're <laughs> no, when, I just literally When you feel it, how away. do you just, stop? Just done. I had a lad online one time, it's just like, 
listen, but you know, we'll just leave it at that. All right, we won't fight. Just forget about it. And have you any tips for anyone out there when they're getting stressed? How when, do you when you go through it you enough? When you, it off? when you hit rock bottom enough, they'll not. Well, don't suppress things. Anyways, talk. You know, don't be avoiding the confront the difficult conversations. You know, because that's what festers the most. And then you're going home snapping uh, with the partner, or maybe the partner is the problem, or. Um, it's such a true saying, isn't it? Confrontation delayed is confrontation multiplied. Oh, jeez, yeah. I never heard about like hundred percent. It's like I think I look. I think a lot of people and a lot of people I work with like it's a big thing that comes up. It's like um, I something that came to me there. You would not believe how many females I've worked with who ha- have allowed themselves to end up with absolutely zero self worth. Right, because they've allowed in work or in relationships, uh, in themselves. every single part of their life, because they've allowed themselves, they've they've allowed themselves to be subtly talked down to, or they've had that negative self talk themselves, or um, like women, like when I get a woman coming to me with back pain or something like shin splints, like they're often a very very tense individual, so they'll 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 have a lot of muscle, but they suppress so much. And you talked about before, and we, we talked about this in the car, and you know what? People probably need to hear, I'll talk about what you said, because you probably don't get enough um, credit for it, but that thing you said before, where women, there's a, lo- a large amount of women saying, I don't need a man, all of this stuff, mm-hmm. right? And they're, they're growing up with this, I can do this myself, like I'll get the big job, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to study hard, I'm going to get it. And then they're hitting 30s and 34s and 5s, and then the big, it's like, bang, this is the trance you see. It's like this... They had they buried their head in the sand and then they woke up and went, Oh fuck. Like I haven't spent any time trying to find a man or any relationship. And then it just hits them overnight when that anger subsides. They're like, God, I'm lonely, like. Mm. I mean, I want kids. And that is a s I I've man, I've encountered that so many times with women. It's unreal. It's like but again, that was fueled by anger. That's a that's a reaction to something that they drive the head down. That's why I said to you about me. If I got burnt in the past, I, I took it as, as fuel and I buried it in my core and I fucking worked like a dog in a reaction mode, which was brilliant to get stuff done. But no, not happening anymore. Not a fucking just done. I swear to God, I'm just like, it's not worth it. Like, I've no interest fighting. <laughs> it's like, you fight if you have to fight, but I've never had any interest in it. It's like, why does it have to be this complicated? Please just talk it out put the emotion aside um, because it just destroys you you just get sick do you know and that's complicated because we're emotional humans but it, no us. it's like just pull it out of it. it's like every conversation will come back to a feeling it'll be roaring and shouting at each other would you make me feel this way it's like can we just take five minutes please can we just walk away come back okay just talk out what it is you want to pick me apart for. Don't like the way you spoke to me in front of that person. Okay. Firstly, apologize. Can I explain where I came from? Or whatever. <sighs> it's just, it's so, it can be just so, even, and like I said, it's not just the clinic. It's like you've encountered loads of situations in life and you're like, Jesus, if I was to go back to that, now you'd do it quite different or you'd be able to, you'd have the experience or the knowledge to talk it, talk it out a bit better. That's something I would have worked personally on myself for years there was why you're where people are coming from where am I coming from am I in a reactive state um, do you know that kind of way because again you could be putting your other shit on someone else and they're like where is this attitude coming from do you know yeah again you see it with with staff like not a lot of people will dive into that stuff but I really like to think you know you're there for for them too like you know you're going no look you know I'm here no matter what but don't lean on me you know, be a strong person and stand on your own two feet. But if you do need help, you know I'm here. Now, if you're listening to this and you don't know Shane, right, you might come across as a very intense guy. But you're actually good old crack. You're just passionate <laughs> about what you're passionate about. You know, and you feel strongly about it. But like, do you find uh, when you're at work now in business, wh- what would what's the best piece of advice that you give to people in business? That you found? Was My, like, mine has always been the, the investing piece. I've, I've never not spent every single piece of profit 
in order to grow or see a return. You're going to get wrong sometimes. You'll make severe fuck ups, but um, just keep spending, keep spending in order to grow to increase that yoke. Take yourself out of the business as quickly as possible. In the sense of like, I'm very much involved. What I mean by take yourself out of business was. It's like the guy living on the shop corner. Like, that's it. He's there for 25 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. So, you know, it can be quite difficult for him to ever take, take himself out of that specific job and see, can he move it on? Um, Just keep spending the money because how are you going to get knowledge otherwise? You know, get your, do your, as I said, your upskilling and your audibles, your all of that stuff. Go to every single course you can. Don't value anything on money. Like, it's what will I get back from it? So, like What's I said. What's the most rewarding feeling you have every week? Yeah, it is fixing people. That's why I did it. Like, I couldn't give it. Like, we're we're flying. I mean, I'll set money goals because, unfortunately, bills have to be paid, right? But that, I, you don't even think. Like, you're giving freebies every day of the week as well. And lads are like, you sure? I was like, yeah, you come back. We'll try another one. Or Because the motive, what gets me out of bed in the morning is is the passion behind that specific job to fix people. Like, I've given people money back because I've said, listen, man, you think this is about money here. Take your money. Go on. Just go away Do you know it's not about the money it never was it's just the true kick I get like I, I sent a video um, at like five past twelve the other night to a to a lady and she's like you're not working now are you I was like that's not work I said I'm absolutely buzzing to see the comparison before and after it was of her father like <laughs> but um, even that man I put up the other night like his gas like his <laughs> He reminds me so much of my own father. It's unbelievable. Like, you know, he looks like I sent her pictures of my own father when he was sick and she's like, Jesus Christ, that cheeky smile or whatever. But um, again, people say, you know, what's, do you work on something that you're passionate about? Look, it's a long road. It's not easy. It's not going to happen overnight. You, Like I said, you're going to have to put a lot of time into yourself um, to make sure that you, because at the end of the day, you become the, if you're in the job, like, it doesn't matter what job you're in really if you're self-employed you're what dictates the price your skill your knowledge and how much you can change or influence somebody's life or a job that you're asked to do compared to the next person it's that simple people invest in people um, and that's just it like they're, they're going to go after what they see like a lot of my people will follow for a long time and then they'll want to know a little bit more about you but like you said in the last two years I went through rough stuff and I just locked locked myself in I just went back in and said no just look after myself now protect my energy for a while and then I'll come back out but that's the last three months in particular I went I'm not I'm not doing any kind of reaction mode anymore just and again I say to people it is not worth it there's not a soul on earth that's worth getting angry over getting hurt over it's not worth it you will get sick in the long run just walk away type stuff do you know and that's not suppressing something that's a big difference <laughs> As I said, I still calculate and time it when I have to release and say the truth sometimes because you'll get quite sick if you suppress that. But um, when you're dealing with someone else's ego that just has an opinion on you before you've even encountered any interactions, I just, I just like, oh, see you later. <laughs> I'm aware. You've learned a lot about Airbnb in the last year or so. Oh, I yeah. stop. <laughs> How are you kip. so unlucky with places Some you stay? Kip. I didn't book that actually. I didn't book that now, but Jesus. Shane sent me a picture of a, is it is Las Vegas, was it? Um, it was, no, that was, that was the first night in Miami. Miami. <laughs> I lost he the sent bag me, as well. They never turned up, by the way. He sent me the pictures of the Airbnb online, <laughs> and then it was a fucking kip. <laughs> it was shocking. Oh, stop. And like, you but like, like, so that, that's what I'm saying. Some people would lose their shit with that, and they'll upset themselves, and it'll ruin their holiday. I was like, <laughs> no, not happening. Not that was bad, hole. though. Kip. The windows <laughs> or the perspex. It was terrible. Totally shocking. Unbelievable. What was the Lamborghini like? No, oh, the, on the racetrack. Yeah. yeah. They're so bouncy. It's just like they're just fucking rough. It's yeah. not even enjoyable. It's that really fucking strapped into it and carve it nice. Yeah, that was quick. Yes, it was. Yeah. Nice. But if, again, I, if, if I give you 100 grand tomorrow, what would you buy? GTR Skyline never changes. I thought after the Ferrari, I <laughs> no, thought after no. driving a few nice cars, you'd change your mind. No, fuck that. What's I, your plans now for the next few months? If any, <laughs> we've came up with a name, so I'll be taking my name completely away from it. I won't say it here. So I'll have to copyright a few things. You're not going to give me an exclusive, no, nope. Alex. Um, but yeah, then have the name done with the domain registered. Um, 
had to just lock in that. You're not call, can I, it's not my friend David. It's not Colin. No. 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 <laughs> okay, anyway. But yeah, no, just pushing it. Just well, it'll be cruise control now. It won't be pushing it. We've done the pushing to get it to where it is, and now it'll just be fine tuning things and just slowly picking it up. But uh, yeah, trying to um, get an app ready at the minute, which uh, it'll be little. It's going to. Tell, what, what do you mean an app? I'll teach. I've been getting an AI thing that I can teach. Um, Loads of jobs that th- that I don't actually genuinely have to do as regards from reading a posture. Mm. So what I mean by that is as well, it'll still be a human element to it I'm just ticking a box, but it'll be able to give, I, I'll upload all the photos into it. So it means I don't have to voice message every single time if it's the same issue and stuff like that. Um, and then that means, again, you can handle more people. The service will be better on their end. So the user, pro- the user end will be far better. Um, but yeah, I want to roll out I want to see can I replicate it but till June I, I need to I have certain things I want to hit by June and then I'll know then right there's the exact model and two or three investors are waiting on that and I'll say to them that's that's it there now there's your model that can work without me and then done hey presto done <laughs> press the button <laughs> that's it that's cool how yeah. do you think of that Honestly, I would, even the name, it just came to me one day. Now, I did not, obviously, I'd been thinking and thinking and thinking, and then one day, it just, I think it was in Miami when it popped into my head. I went, that's it. There's the name. Done. What's Miami like? Yeah, some of money over there. Ridiculous. What are the people like? Like, silly. Like, you know, boys paying 150 euro for one PT and a dart. Do you know? Like, it's like, it's isn't there some fuckers. difference to the frame of mind of the people in the US and America and Ireland? Negativity of Ireland not wanting anyone to get on. That's a, and I think a lot of Irish people hate to hear that, but it, I still say it. I, I don't know. Is it just? Is it the weather? Is it the history? Like the amount of stuff that's gone on in our last hundred years sure would have been horrendous. Do you know? I don't know where it carries through, but it is. It's it's quite scary. Like the minute you land. Now you asking you said that to an American though. They'll tell you, no, there's a lot of negative, and they reckon there's a lot more negativity coming in, but. The guy in America that we went to said it seems to be what they would class as foreigners. Like it wouldn't be out and out Americans. So look, I don't know where that. That's a culture, I suppose. At the end of the day, isn't it? It just. Um, but there's no doubt about it. Just Ireland just have deep rooted emotion. Oh, just career. Yeah, look at that prick. Yeah. They love to see you going where it start, and then they can't wait to see you go down. It's fucking mad. This but again, what does it? It's like I said to you. It just puts you in a reactive mode. I seen a lad the other day post, and he was like, "You know, fuck all you haters." And I went, "Yeah, no, I remember being in that phase a few years ago." But fuck that, too much effort. Yeah, it is. It is, isn't it? I often wonder. I'm still going to build my village and just vanish. Build a big wall around it. That's the plan. That's a cult. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Far from. It. It's just called Centerbank. Scientology. <laughs> Centre banks. <laughs> Were you there? Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I, I didn't stay. We only done the day trips, um, so I probably didn't get to enjoy it. So probably not fair fully. Shane, thanks for calling again. No problem. I didn't rot your hole too much. No, no. Yeah, and thanks for helping Vicky. Oh yeah, no, she's no. playing it since. Mad, isn't it? Yeah. Although she's fairly now looking forward to the baby coming out now. Mm. She's getting hard to breed, or she's getting. <laughs> Big up here, and it's pushing her lungs up. And she at night time, she's like, oh, God, I have to go to bed. I'm just so tired. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thanks for coming. No problem. Sure, I'll be keeping an eye on you. See when this app comes. I know well my names are going to be in it or my initials <laughs> or logo. something. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'll chat to you. Thank Keep you. an eye on Shane now and see what he's at. You never know. You might need him someday. Good luck.